Today, I'm going to try fixing this Aston Martin with life hacks and household materials. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda out here with my Aston Martin DB7, and I have a couple of problems today that we are going to try to fix with basic household supplies. Now, the first problem is not a huge problem, but I think this... Crest cavity protection toothpaste is going to be enough to solve it. I hope so because I haven't found anything yet that will fix it. Now the second problem here is actually a little bit bigger of a problem and I've never seen anyone do this but I think it might be a common problem and if this magic sizing spray fixes it then I think a lot of people are going to want to try it. So let's start with the smallest problem first. These rear taillights are actually in pretty good nick. Now the problem here, and you might be able to see it, is it looks like there was maybe some cleaning solution or something that was splattered, and it has kind of etched itself into the lenses here. Now the rest of the lens is actually pretty good. There's actually like two splotches. Might be a little hard to see where the reflector is, but it's kind of splattered there and then ran. And these are not coming off. It's not just on the top or the surface. I even tried scratching with my finger fingernail i have used a wet towel to wiped it down so it's not like a film on top it's basically kind of like it's burned in there but something that was slightly acidic has etched it in there now because i need to polish this out a little bit i thought that the toothpaste here with a little bit of grittiness might be good just to kind of hand polish this out so let's get a microfiber towel and try it out all right so hopefully this works here i've got a car microfiber towel. I'm just gonna put a little smear of the toothpaste on there. I don't think I'm gonna need a lot. And I'm gonna start on the top one right here. Now this might work on anything that you might need just a little bit of polishing compound for. I'm actually not gonna press hard because I don't wanna really take off any more of the top surface material than I need to. So just kinda giving it some swirling action clockwise, counterclockwise. And before I go on to that second one, I'll use the clean end of the towel here and just wipe that off and see how we did. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. That sure seemed to work. There's two things going on here. Seem to kind of polish it out pretty decently. I mean, I feel like I can see just a little bit of the remnants. That's how much it was etched in here, right up at the top. So I'm going to hit that again here. But it definitely seemed to kind of polish out that top layer there and get rid of that staining or that etching and then two it also smells like minty goodness so that is a pretty good result now i'm just going to put another little dollop right here go after this lower one right there that seems to be kind of persistent and again just kind of putting finger pressure on it counterclockwise clockwise I don't want to get any streaking here it's slightly abrasive and clean edge of the cloth and then again maybe a little water or cleaning solution just to clean it off make sure there's nothing left on there but look at that the lens is clear so little household hack for getting scratches swirls etching out of lenses probably use this on headlights too if you needed to but that was the one i was less worried about because when you're polishing a lot of things can work like a polishing compound and I had a crest around. So that is one result. Now let's get on to the one that's a little more complex and I don't know if my solution is actually gonna work. All right, so we're in the car here and the seatbelt to the driver's side seat is right here and this is the problem. Now this is not a problem specific to this car. It's a problem specific to old cars. And if I pull out the seatbelt here, what I wanna show you is that it kinda comes out pretty easy, but right about there, what you might have noticed is that the seatbelt is folded over on itself. And this causes some problems here because when you start releasing the seatbelt back into the guide here, because it's folded over, it gets stuck just like this. I have no pressure on the seatbelt and it's not winding back in because it's folded over on itself and it's too thick to go in there. And you've got to kind of pull it out and then separate it. Look how bad this is here. There is like half of the seatbelt folding under. And so I've got to keep pulling it out. It is fully out right now. There's actually nothing left in there and it's all just kind of folded over on itself. And the reason that I think that this happens is that just overuse and running over these little guides over years and years and sitting out in the sun and all that, it just gets much more flexible and soft than most seatbelts are. Most seatbelt material is kind of this heavy duty nylon or polyester, whatever it is, and it kind of retains its shape. You might 
finding seat belts a little uncomfortable because they're cutting into you. But now, because it's kind of turned into this flimsy fabric, it doesn't want to wind in there very well unless you are guiding it in so it doesn't fold over on itself. So what I thought I might do here is a little launderer's trick, and that is starching your clothes. So as you wear clothes and launder them a lot, they start getting softer too. You lose fabric, you lose structure on them. And a lot of people will use sizing spray, what they used to call starch back in the days, to give a little bit more body and shape. It's basically like hairspray for clothes. And so what I thought I would do here is pull the seatbelt all the way out and then spray each side with sizing spray and let that sizing spray stay in there, dry in there, and then just see if this seatbelt wants to hold its shape or if it's gonna get bound up again while folding over on itself. So, and I draped a towel over the seat here. I don't think it's gonna be a problem to get a little bit of this overspray on things. You can see seatbelt is already folded over on itself here. So i to be really careful about this. I'm gonna pull it all the way out here. It's not toxic or anything. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't put it on your clothes. It comes out thicker than a hairspray. It's not aerosolizing all over, but this is really where it's bad and has no structure. So I'm gonna be kind of generous with it. I'm glad I got the towel out because it kind of comes out a little wetter than I was expecting. I'm just gonna twist it over here. Use the towel as a backdrop. Spray underneath it too. It's not sticky like hairspray. Give this a little coating and especially where that crease is, I'm kind of dousing it. Now I'm gonna say because this is wetter than I thought and it comes out kind of more like a liquid than a spray, what I'm gonna actually do here is I'm just going to anchor this out, make sure that the seatbelt stays flat, but I'm just going to let this kind of dry flat here. So I will say, now it turns out this process is not gonna be that quick, but I wanna do it right. You know, you know what I'm saying? So just gonna go ahead and tie this off here, I'll let it dry. Two weeks later. All right, so here's the moment of truth. It has been a day here. I have let the seatbelt dry, that it's all nice and dry now. And I am curious to see if this will retract back in there after using the sizing spray without binding up because every time I release it, it gets stuck. So I'm just gonna pull it out here and release it. And it is winding back up there. It appears to roll back in there just fine. So, sweet. All right. You know, my guess is that that's not the most permanent of fixes. My guess is that once that starts kind of folding over on itself again, maybe binding up a little bit, you're gonna wanna pull it out, extend it all the way out and hit it with a little bit more magic sizing spray. But what I will say is that at least for a while, I am not going to have this bothering me because this thing would get twisted up and caught every time I used it. So that is a result. So with a couple little life hacks, toothpaste, sizing spray, I've gone ahead and tweaked the car just a little bit. So if you're having problems with your seatbelt or little scratches or stains on the plastic or paintwork of your car, I'll put links to toothpaste and sizing spray in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper.